A new trailer for The Mandalorian just dropped, so today I'm gonna make a Fallout prop! Guys, it takes weeks to make these videos. They're impossible to time. The laser pistol is a weapon from the video game Fallout that that's all I got. I don't know how to, I build things. I don't words good. Well, sorry, I don't words well. Let's just get into it. So this video is happening because while organizing my prop collection, my laser musket literally fell apart as opposed to figuratively falling apart. I don't know why I'm surprised. It was a mixed media project that included an iron core supported by foam, but parts of it were intact. So I decided to rebuild it as a laser pistol. First, the barrel was made out of EVA foam floor mats. Well part of one mat to be specific, I think a quarter of a mat. The edges came out a little jagged, so I sanded them on my belt sander and attached them with contact cement. No, really, I swear. <laughs> Again, very mixed media project. Then the end was built up with two millimeter and four millimeter craft foam, respectively. And oh, look at that, I'm using Blasted Dip, which isn't necessary. It's just what I used to do at the time and for <laughs> like what, six years? There's nothing wrong with it, it's just, it ends up being slightly more expensive than just using gloss black house paint, oddly enough. See, the whole idea is that the Plastidip seals in the EVA foam, so you've got a surface that you can paint on, but it takes multiple coats, and it never really comes out glossy glossy. It's like semi-gloss. So why wouldn't you just do a couple of coats of gloss black acrylic? Just a little tangent. I don't regret using it, I just regret using it for as long as I did. I really only needed to use it enough times to get the containers for my Ripley flamethrower. So twice. Then I added this little cylindrical bit of cardboard. That's actually the protective casing for those uh, club bracelets. You know, the, the glow in the dark club bracelets. I guess probably Spencer's gifts you can get those. Next, I made a handle out of EVA foam and contact cemented it to the barrel. Okay, yeah, that one I actually did contact cement. And you'll notice that I cleaned up some of the seams there because I've gotten a little bit better at seams since then. I built this other little module for the back. It's supposed to slide over, but I sanded it a bit too much. And I don't think I can make it. I don't know, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, that's it. Okay, this is so stupid. I'm gonna have to sand away a little bit of the body here. Or maybe I can just slice it off in order for it to fit. And it fits! I'm totally painting it separately though. I filled in the old Greeblies and created new ones using scrap foam left over from other projects. I think those were DRD parts. And filled in the seams with DAP Alex Dry. For the small EVA foam pieces, I'm using super glue instead of contact cement. Just for convenience sake, contact cement is really overkill for anything small. Although with super glue, you gotta worry about gluing yourself to your project and it being foam. You could very, it'll just rip. But in this instance, total convenience. I just didn't want to deal with fumes that uh, contact cement would release. I also made one of these details for each side out of EVA foam dowels from Miklase, wrapped in craft foam with a mold I made of some Rolos. <laughs> oh man, Jake's recast in chocolate. Rolo is gonna come after me. I try to make my triggers at least semi-functional because people will just naturally want to pull them. Had many a fake trigger broken by an actor doing their job. <laughs> I think that happened on like one of the Harley guns. What does this button even do? It's, the, it's not that a, actually. It's the hammer that hits it, the firing pin, which hits back, the bullet. And it snaps and hits the end of the bullet. all three. It's actually a very old. Look, uh, I've been in the army. I know what I'm talking about. I mean, I was looking for like it reloads it or something, but okay. So I carved out a slot with my razor pen, cut a trigger out of foam, and stuck two pen springs into it just to give it a bit more bounce back. Then I attached a trigger guard. Oh, and somewhere in here, I used offcuts from Ben Eadie's chain mail as uh, screw details or rivet details. One day, Ben, <laughs> one day I'm actually gonna make something with the chain mail. I swear it. And now that they won't be in the way, I can finally attach those cylindrical side details. Oh, although in retrospect, I should have painted them ahead of time. It was just as difficult to get in there to paint that. It's like, I, I can have the forethought to avoid 50% of my aggravation. William Shakespeare, making the mistakes so you don't have to. See, I don't have a convenient tutorial to follow. I'm just figuring it out as I go. Hey, it's good enough for Harrison Ford, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Wrong grill! For the base of the grip, I'm making that two sheets thick of floor mat, uh, plus a sheet of craft foam. I crudely cut that out with a work knife and then cleaned it up on my belt sander before attaching it. Then I attached more foam details, including a side vent. Side vent? Yeah. I cut a thin foam dowel, not from Meekless, that was uh, TNT Cosplay Supply, in half, covered it with strips of thin craft foam to sort of imply that it's a hinge because 
that's where you sort of reload it in the game. I really love how that detail came out. Then I attached a beveled wide dowel section to the top. That, that one was from Meeklays. See how interesting this is when I just stop the video dead to say where I got every single thing? Yeah, that'll play. Is this really what YouTube is now? Just ramble for as long as possible? The world has changed around me. Now I'm making the front roll bar detail. Yeah, let's call it roll bar. Out of random bits of scrap foam from wherever. Those grooves were scored with a razor pen and then heat formed with my heat gun so that they open up a bit. For pieces this small, I like to skewer them just so I don't burn my fingers as much. If you attempt to make something out of EVA foam, one way or another, you're coming away burned. The roll bar itself was a wooden dowel, which of course I had to build up with scrap foam. I also added more details elsewhere. I know this can seem repetitive, but I'm really just trying to hammer home that you can recreate most details out of scrap foam. I simulated a door behind the vent just by scoring a line with my razor pen and heat forming it like I did with the front detail. Now to clean up the paint job. I did that initially by coating nearly the whole thing in green. Just because the first layer doesn't really matter, it's just going to soak in anyway. In order to get all the sides, I had to skewer it on the vise. You have to do multiple coats for the areas that are white so that they don't show through. That's why it helps to do a base coat or build so perfectly that you don't need to fill the seams. But it takes less time to fix this with an extra layer of paint than it does to spend all day making a perfect seam. I know some people are gonna go, oh, that's bent, that's not straight, but there's, there's gonna be a bit of flex with foam. So like you do this and it straightens out. This is my personal philosophy is I'd rather have something that doesn't shatter when you drop it. Like if this falls off a shelf, I might lose these side greeblies and then it's like 30 seconds to super glue them back on. If this were resin, it would shatter. You'd probably get the same result with MDF. I think this ended up being two coats of green before I felt comfortable applying gloss black. I did that not only to the grip, but to any area that would eventually need to look shiny and metallic. Black makes really good base coats for anything that's got to look like shiny metal. When it was dry, I put down painter's tape to protect the green parts. Then I painted all the black parts silver. I was initially very disappointed with the look of this paint, but I found that with additional layers, eventually it evened out. This is a long clip and people don't like it when I time lapse, so real quick I just want to thank my patrons. They're the names that are scrolling by. They support the channel. They're the ones who make these videos possible by supporting me. Also, I did want to point out, some of you may notice that the title of this video is incomplete. That's because the algorithm targets certain keywords Words. So if I want to keep my monetization, I have to essentially talk in code, which sort of defeats the purpose of putting information out there for the people that are looking for it. And it can be very limiting when you're a prop maker who builds prop weapons for a living. What I'm saying is that I'd like to not have to rely on the monetization and just give my audience what they want and make it easier for the people searching for this content to be able to actually find it. My current patrons get me part of the way there. It's because of them that I can make the videos at all, but I'd love to be able to throw off the shackles of ad revenue and build crazy awesome stuff. So if you want to help me make the videos that are decidedly harder to get under the radar of the algorithm and you're able to support me on Patreon, then it'd be much easier for me to do that. All right, did we reach the end of that clip without time lapsing? All right, back to the build. So, well, well, never really left the build, really. You can use this dowel for the cable, which I did not have last time, so if you're somehow watching this video before the laser musket video, use this instead, because I think the only thing I had available at the time was a rope, which looks fine from 10 feet away but will not hold up under scrutiny. In order to get this to uh, hold its shape, I'm going to need to heat form it. Probably gonna need to cut into it too, but let's start with heat forming. This is my Wagner <laughs> heat gun. Been using this for a decade. I trimmed that foam dowel down to size and then heat formed it. To get it to hold its shape after it cooled, I folded it and placed it into two spools of solder. <laughs> These are my one, two, three spools. I, I'm just, I'm never gonna get them, guys. And I painted it silver as a base coat and yellow as a top coat so that it would come out more vibrant and take fewer coats of yellow altogether. Because yellow on black, oh my God, that's never coming through. This shade is DRD yellow for anyone who's wondering. While that was drying, I peeled away the tape on the laser itself to find that of course paint had snuck underneath. So you see what I mean about masking? I was talking about this in the last video. Hey, if there's anyone who wants to give me advice about masking, Asking, that's the advice that I'm looking for because clearly I'm 
awful at. I have never known painter's tape to actually do its job. So I went back and touched it up with more green. When all the pieces had dried, I attached the yellow tube with super glue. I added that little metal joining strip. You know, I've got like a spool of the actual, is it, is it mounting, mounting strap? It's a little metal mounting strap. Sure. I have it for real, but I recreated it with foam just because it's cosmetic in this situation. Somewhere in all this process, I painted the trigger and made sure it was absolutely completely dry before I put it back into place. I do not want the paint acting as glue holding it in place. I thought I was done here, hence the partial fly around shots, but realized that I'd forgotten the screws. So I added those. Those pieces aren't foam. Those are actual screws harvested from dead devices and nails that I literally just pressed into the foam. And there we go. I was really glad to have been able to salvage what was otherwise would have been a completely destroyed prop and in an effort to keep it from disappearing back into the catacombs of forgotten props, I'd like it to go to a fan. So you can find this prop for sale at an incredibly reduced price in my Etsy store link below assuming you're watching this in 2020 thanks for watching be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future uploads and as i said at the top of the video it does take a long time to actually make a build video so while you wait for the next upload you can check out any of the hundreds of past tutorials there's even a fully dedicated fallout prop playlist thanks for watching happy crafting see you later